Hello everyone and welcome again to another Teacher Joseph podcast. Today we're just going to very quickly look at the future perfect. Now I know that this tense is one of the more difficult ones, but it's only difficult because of the way that it's classified. Future and perfect. Those words are enough to put any student into a state of shock because you immediately have to rely on your memory and grammatical classifications. As I've said many times on these podcasts, when I was a boy growing up around London in the UK in the 1980s, we were not taught grammar. There was a feeling, an opinion at that time, that we should simply assimilate phrases and the teacher should correct those. But the idea of teaching from a place of a table, you know, like those old mathematical tables, 2 times 2 equals 4, 4 times 4 equals... 16? Have I got that right? <laughs> well, there's a reason why I'm an English teacher. But anyway, the days of teaching with these kind of tables uh, is something that was left behind in the 1980s. So I only learned what the future perfect actually is when I trained to be a teacher. Of course, I knew the construction and I knew how to use it, but I didn't know the classification of it. If you had have asked me before I became a teacher, what's the future perfect? I would have said, no idea. But if you show me an example, I can tell you if it's right or not. So you see, this is why learning grammar becomes so difficult, because we're looking at a book and we expect that book to teach us or to feed us. But actually, if you just pick up any piece of English literature, not a grammar table, and you go through it, you would be easily able to identify grammar that you're familiar with. And I'm sure the future perfect would be there. One very good practice, which I always recommend for my students, is just to pick up an English book or newspaper and instead of studying the meaning of it, just take your pen and underline grammar that you recognize. For example, that's the past tense. That's the future tense. Oh, that's the present perfect. Oh, that's the possessive. That's the superlative. This is a great way of just coming to terms with exactly how much grammar you know. So let's move on then to the future perfect to see exactly what it is and how it works. Well, it kind of looks like the perfect tense in the future, but it has some odd parts to it. So let me give you an example. I will have finished that job for you by Thursday, I'm going to have that completed for you by Wednesday. I have, I will have worked here in this company for 36 years on the 25th. Okay, so let's just look at the constructions there that I used. So... I will have completed that job for you. So the future perfect always begins with will have or I'm going to have. Okay, will have or I'm going to have. Now, you know the future tense. We can use will or going to to create it. So I will have that done for you by next week. I'm going to have that done for you by next week. So will have. I'm going to have, and then there's a by, okay, by a certain date. That's the most common way to use it. 
And it doesn't have to be in the first person. You could use it in some form of reported speech. They said that they will have that done for me by Wednesday. Okay, that's a very common construction that we use here in the UK. Um, of course, I think the more official way of saying that is they said that they would have that done for me. Because of reported speech, the rules change a little bit. But either way, um, they're both very, very common. So, will have, going to have, and then in the second part, buy. And then the last uh, thing that I mentioned there was um, another example I will have worked here for 36 years next week, for example. So we're removing the by, but we're still keeping to the same pattern. So I hope you find that helpful. It's actually not hard, and it's mostly used in business, of course, when you're saying when something's going to be done. I, I, I can't think of a way you could use that in a family setting. For example, uh, I'm going to have that chicken cooked by 4 p.m. It, it doesn't really sound right. It sounds a little bit formal, doesn't it, for the house? But uh, that that's the way we use it in business. So that's the future perfect. I hope you found this very helpful. It's so simple, and you will hear different variations of it. But it's the the way we speak in order to um, ensure that we give someone an indication of a deadline. So when we say by Thursday, it means that Thursday is the last day we will do it. It could be done on Monday, Tuesday or Wednesday even, you know, it'll be done by Thursday. So we're effectively saying at the latest. So that's a really good thing to say. Um at home, it would be more common just to use a future construction. I'll be cooking until 4 p.m. That chicken won't be ready until 5. So uh, it, it's much easier to say. So it's a much more of a formal thing, um, but really, really useful in business. Well, I hope you found this helpful. Let's talk again soon. And if you have any comments or feedback, please leave them for me. Thank you so much. Bye.